Hello, good evening all. Sorry, uh, we got late actually. Our taxi, our driver went to some other place, some misunderstanding. So we got late. So uh, today the agenda uh, is uh, firstly that uh, I will present on deploying Magento on AWS with S3FS. And second, uh, there was some presentation by AWS Solution Architect, but somehow we couldn't make it happen. So today we will have only one presentation here. So before we start, I want to share something about the Magento meetup we started around four uh, months ago. So the idea is uh, uh, to increase the Magento community in the Singapore and uh, the Magento developers can communicate each other and can share their problems, can share the knowledge, how we can do the things on the Magento, uh, depending on development also and uh, server related things, hosting related things, uh, uh, cloud, etc. So this month we proposed to have uh, the AWS centric one. Uh, also in the last to last month we organized in the Microsoft Office. This month we are going to organize AWS. So we thought that it's a good idea. And uh, as I'm working in Rhinosys technology, and we also worked a lot in AWS. So uh, we want to share something how uh, we utilize the AWS. So uh, let's start it. Sorry, something will happen. should not go to the full screen. Let's do in the presentation directly. I should continue here, I suppose. Okay, so uh, here's uh, the agenda of this, why AWS? Uh, I will firstly brief about the AWS also, uh, why we should use AWS. And uh, the th second thing is the auto scalability. How you can make your architecture scalable so that can handle unlimited amount of traffic and you can uh, how you can organize the resources in the AWS architecture so I will share with that so firstly uh, you uh, may be already aware that AWS is very big it's around 45 plus services already in the market and age per your need you can utilize the services and AWS is very very uh, flexible uh, you can just use the services which you want the services which you do not want just do not use it so you just need if server, so you just use EC2 service. If you need storage, you just use S3. Even you can use your other hosting providers and combined with that, you can use the S3 storage only. So every different services is flexible and independently isolated from each other. So you can utilize the power of services. And if we talk about general purpose application, web application, uh, including Magento, you do not need to use so many, only four or five is enough to use. So let's briefly see uh, what services we can utilize in a general uh, web application system. First is EC2, EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud. It's, uh, uh, as you can say, is an operating system. Here you can run any operating system and it's virtual machine on the cloud. Second is RDS, RDS is Relational Database Service. Um, all you know that AWS is Infrastructure as a Service. But on top of that, RDS, uh, because in infrastructure as a service, you have to manage everything at your end. But RDS database, they are providing the managed service. So within the RDS, it inbuilt have uh, a backup system and or uh, update system. So RDS is most widely used whenever we use the uh, application 
and RDS provides some database like MySQL, MS SQL, Oracle, and PostgreSQL, and Aurora also. Uh, it's their uh, database. So these kind of database you can use and can uh, utilize. Next service we want is S3, simple storage service to store the user content and uh, keep the user content outside of your uh, server. So you can have scalability at your instance levels, the application layer. You can have its um, capacity. And keeping S3 outside uh, is safe. And also on top of that, you can use CloudFront CDN service to, to deliver your content and uh, fastly from nearby location of user location. Second, uh, next service you can utilize the uh, Route 53. Route 53 is a managed DNS service by AWS. So here you can add your domain, create hosted zone, and point your EC2 instances or your load balancer uh, to point your site. And next, CloudFront, I already told that it's a CDN service from AWS. You can utilize CloudWatch. CloudWatch, next service you can utilize to monitor closely on your instances. Like EC2, RDS, both have instances. They provide free uh, monitoring of five minute interval. Monitoring, you say, it is CPU utilization, uh, in network input output, you can monitor those at five uh, minute interval freely. But if you use CloudWatch extended uh, facility, there is this facility you to utilize at one minute interval at some extra cost. So depending upon that, you can take some actions like you say that if CPU utilization is higher than 80% for such amount of time, take this action. Uh, like you can start new instance, you can alert, send the email, SMS, those kind of thing you can do with the CloudWatch monitoring. So that's very helpful uh, for the network uh, administrator part. Uh, next service you can use the elastic load balancing. Elastic load balancing you have to use if you want multiple instances of, of your application uh, that can handle the load. So uh, I will share more about this later. Elastic bin stock, yeah. So we see it's infrastructure as a service, but elastic bin stock is, uh, you can say, it's a platform as a service they are providing. So in this, it do the provisioning of resources. Uh, you can set up the resources type, and it will start the resources for you, monitor those, and uh, you can uh, you can do everything like you can do as a platform as a service. And you can utilize your custom AMI also even in that case, but it's a mixed model actually. So it, it's not need they are providing UOS. There is many AMIs you can select, but if you want to change those AMIs, you can just add your custom AMI where you can set up your operating system like Linux and set up of your tools like open office service, <coughs> whatever you want to run. So you can utilize that. So it works with the last load balancer closely and EC2 S3 also. So these are the most important services which you can see in a general web application system. Yeah, there are many more we can utilize, like uh, there is uh, for uh, share, uh, for storage only, we have the Glacier. For um, like for the Lambda is there, for the mobile testing is there, uh, like mobile farm I suppose. There are many other uh, services we can see. Uh, now, um, I want to share about how to think a scalable point of view, how to think from a scalability point of view. It's starting from single box. Like you see, only one EC2 instance we have. And everything is in a single box. Like you have the OS there, you have your Apache there, you have MySQL inside there, you are storing your user content there. So everything is single box. With AWS, you can use this. Like, any, like similar to any shared platform or other platform. So we start from this, the user is directly hitting your server. Uh, this diagram is actually uh, as per the AWS architect, so regions. Uh, AWS is divided into the regions, that's their main data centers. Within the region, there can be multiple availability zones that are connected using uh, LANs or some other thing. Uh, probably they share around 5 to 10 miles distance within a region. So around, I think, 8 regions we have, including Singapore, North Virginia, North California, Sydney and others. So see firstly, this is a single box. Now think from scalability, you cannot scale it. So adding the services, I, I will add the more services. Like first I added the RDS service. 
keep out your database to RDS. If you are using MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, you just keep out into RDS. Set up RDS, import there, and connect your application to that RDS directly. There is a lot of security also implemented, so you can set security group rules like only only your EC2 can access to the database because you do not want to access your database from other side. If you are working in a company, you want to access RDS from your company network, you just set up the IP address uh, in the security group of RDS and only your company network can be able to access uh, your RDS. Those kind of security uh, you can see. Now think more, you can add the S3 bucket for your user content. Your application is one, but after that, if it launches, user edit, like profile, they are uploading profile images, you have product, product image. So you can store those into S3 bucket. So then your load will be also less, like your static content, even JS, CSS, static content, you can offload to S3. Later, if you want more scalability, you can add a, is auto, uh, you can add a load balancer there, and with the auto scaling policy, auto scaling policy you can set up as per your uh, application nature. Like you you uh, you want like uh, if your application is running, uh, your EC2 instance is running uh, seventy percent or more load for less or more than ten minutes, you start another EC2 instance. So because you can start now, now you can start many other instances because it is not depending upon anything it's just a pure application now database is outside storage is outside user content is outside so you can scale here at this level so you have to start a uh, load balancer so the load balancer you are will be connected to your dns so wherever, uh, whenever someone will access your domain it will point to the uh, uh, load balancer first and load balancer will see to which server the service uh, the request should be served so you can see uh, this way you can make your uh, application more scalable. If you want more scalability, you can do your deployment to two availability zones. So if even due to natural disaster, if one availability zone is down or some hardware failure, one availability zone is down, still there is one more availability zone where your servers is running and you will never uh, let your application down. In this case, you can also have master and slave database. One database you can make master, and secondly, the slave database. You can use read replica concept also. It's up to you how much scalability, how much fault tolerance, disaster recovery uh, you want. It's just a start, uh, so you can see. Adding more services to this, you can use on the S3 bucket, I say, you can use the CloudFront for CDN for fast delivery of content. You can use other services like CloudWatch, IAM role, IAM role to manage finally on your uh, resources if you are working in a group and want to give access to somebody for S3 only, for EC2 only, you can control those. ACS service you can use for its email service. Um, you just get an SMTP, utilize that and start sending emails. Just like the SendGrid you generally use or Gmail SMTP you use. So this this is the planning or you can do to make your application scalable. So this was general public application. This applies to Magento also. This applies to general public application also. If we talk about specific to Magento, you maybe all know about the Magento. It's an e-commerce, a big e-commerce platform, and uh, many sites are hosted on that and running. And in Magento, we have a media folder where all the product images resides. If there is users, profile images reside there. So only the media folder is the one which is user content after the application, so the application in Magento. So you can host your application in the EC2 instance, but media is tied with that. So media need to be there. So either you can use S3, but you have to do some programming, coding, to make whenever user is uploading in the back end some product images it should go to the S3. There are a couple of ways uh, we can discuss uh, but today I will focus only on using the S3 FS and I will tell you why. Because if you do some coding efforts it, it, it will take time and 
if you utilize S3FS, uh, so let me share what is S3FS. S3FS is fuse based file system. Um, fuse, it means file system in user space. It's a technology which allow any user to create its own file system without going into kernel detail. So you don't need to modify kernel, you have a file system. So you can just create a folder, mount any uh, drive, generally it supports like S3, Google uh, drive also. So this is a fuse based file system where uh, there is a library S3FS and in that using that library you can mount a S3 bucket to your local folder. So what we are going to do is we will mount our bucket to the media folder. If you mount the media folder, it means whatever is in the bucket is in the media or whatever we upload in the media folder, it automatically goes to the bucket. Yeah. One question. So yeah, sure. Uh, since S3FS is a fuse based that's file system, yeah. Uh, what, let's say if my uh, commu compute load is a uh, Windows, okay. would, it, would it still work? No, S3F is only for Linux. Only for Linux, so yes. no Windows support. No Windows support for S3F library. Yeah, maybe some other library support for Windows, but it's only for Linux. So it's just, just like mounting a, like you see some power ISO tool in the Windows you see power ISO. So you can m mount your ISO into a virtual CD drive. You don't have CD drive, but it's still you mount. It's having the E drive or F drive, similar to that. S3 is outside, but you mount here, so your operating system assume that this is here. So whatever data we have in media, it will assume the data is here. And that's why you don't need to change anything in the Magento coding. Because whatever product images you will upload, it will go to the local folder as per programming, but immediately it will sync to the S3 bucket. So why we use S3FS? Because uh, you can use for media folder, and it's scalable because keeping outside the media folder will able then you will be able to scale your EC2 instance. Like then you can start two EC2 instances. You can have a load balancer because both servers are running, but the media both is uh, using mount concept of S3FS and mounted to the same bucket, so sharing the same data uh, storage. So either you are connected to first instance or second instance, you will never know which instance you connected. But either instance you connected, if you are uploading something user content, it will going to the same bucket and immediately sharing to the whole EC2 instances. That way you can achieve some sort of scalability. And the main, main point of this integration is no Magento coding required. Nothing change and it will straightforward work. So uh, I can quickly show you a demo uh, how you can do this. I set up it. Uh, you see, um, I created a setup. This one. Uh, I just uh, started an EC2 instance and uh, I set up Magento there. And uh, in the media folder, I mounted a bucket. So I will show, like, uh, where I am. Here in the HTML, okay, let's see here, yeah, you see, this media folder you can see here, but actually it's mounted to bucket, I can show you how, let me show you firstly, mm. so you mount it and then later on you do a soft link over? No, once you mount it, it's, it's linked mount. automatically. Oh. It's automatically linked. L let me show you the first the demo. So uh, later I will mount or unmount also, we'll show you. So you see, I have a file here, a screenshot, and this bucket I mounted here. So you can see these files are, this is a Renosage demo bucket. I mounted into the media folder here. So catalog folder, customer folder, I already have here. So I can delete one file here, like uh, I, if I delete the screenshot from here, okay, screenshot showing here, now remove, or even if you delete some file here, like a screenshot if you want to delete here, 
it will delete from here this screenshot will be removed you see this screenshot is removed from here so you see this is the media folder here you have the catalog product image edge so whatever image will go here will automatically sync to the s3 bucket and this way you can have multiple magento instances and how i do it um, you see this is uh, on the git already s3fs and it's very easy to install actually um, if you go here if you started the amazon default machine image uh, amazon machine image it's based on centos so you can use the power of yum yum install so you just have to install some prerequisites which we need for uh, s3fs to work and later you can clone s3fs from git repository directly and there is a couple of commands you can see uh, to make it install and once it install you uh, will need to set up your password file so generally i prefer uh, we can have the password file the past wt file at some location and in that you have to give your uh, account access key and secret key you can create this access key secret key by im role you go to the aws console and you you can create your user role and have your secret credential keys which i already set up and uh, just it's there and there is one commands which you can utilize uh, let me see the command i noted yeah so this is a simple command if you want to mount a bucket you just utilize s3fs and uh, dash o allow other renosis demo is the bucket name at the folder name which where you want to mount okay and actually i already mounted so i will unmount it first so for unmount there is a command of f user unmount uh, f user mount dash u uh, so let's add this command okay so i i have to log in as uh, root firstly then only it will work yeah it's unmounted so if you see this was the media folder if i refresh it now there is nothing because when we mounted it then only it will show so now it is not sync and if you want to mount this media folder then you have to um, use the command which i already shared like this one the command copy and just it's mounted and automatically your data will sync here your os will assume that your data is here and it will work like the normal magento works so it's a magic kind of thing you can see but it's actually the file system you are mounting so this is the concept yeah definitely you need installation and some other but all helps are there so i'm not including that in the demo but you can go here you can find all the details how to install s3fs how to set up your configuration there are a couple of ways you can set up the configuration and uh, then just mount and unmount your bucket and enjoy <laughs> so this is the demo and just uh, some troubleshooting maybe because if you do it uh, your folder should be blank and your folder should be writable I prefer seven 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 permission or appropriate writable permission. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can say the permission is not right. Yeah, the appropriate writable permission we need only. But I just go with seven seven seven. And uh, yeah, we have a discussion in the last meetup also about this permission that uh, the permission should be only writable or you can make the owner to Apache. Then it's safe to use that. So this way you can utilize. S3FS. This is one way of doing uh, the S3 integration. Yeah, there are surely the couple of uh, ways. Like you have S3 SDK by AWS officially. You can utilize that. Do some custom coding to handle your user content to uh, store in the bucket and do some path changes whenever you are referring the images and refer those images from the bucket. So this is all about. Uh, magento and uh, firstly we talked about uh, scalability point of view how you think this is a start point you think start thinking how much dr or uh, high availability you want for your application according to your client requirement or your project requirement 
So, and later we discussed the one way of doing the Magento S3 integration. So, that's all. Uh, that's all from my side. <laughs> Any queries? I talked a lot. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, yeah, sure. Once you mounted your S3 bucket, yes, does it act like a normal Linux folder? Yes, like so a normal folder. So you can just run SageMod. Yes, you can create those settings. Yeah, you can create files, folders inside that. Create, give permission. Like you do Linux permission. You change the owner. Everything you can do. Okay. But it's actually a file system, S3 file system. Mm -hmm. You mounted here. Okay. So this is a concept of Fuge. Fuge means file system in user. Mm. It's a technology which allow you to uh, launch or install a file system not natively supported in the OS. So, so S3 is not supported natively in the Linux, but you can mount it here. Okay. So is there any configuration on the S3 part? Before no, you nothing. Do the mounting? No, no, no. You just need your access key and secret key. To set up in the S3FS configuration, which I showed the past WD file you have to create. Okay. So access key, column, secret key. You put it, and then your S3FS may be able to communicate with your bucket. So if you will mount, it will show you error if your configuration is wrong. Okay. Your credential is wrong. Do you usually create another user for it, or you just use the default? Uh, the default basically, yeah. You can use the root user, yeah, but no nobody uh, uh, prefer that. Okay. You create another role, I am role and give the only the S3 specific permission, S3 all permission. So that role, if somebody can hack your credential, okay. it still he have access only to S3, not your other resources okay. of AWS. So if you can use the power of that. So here like the media folder, yes. the S3 bucket is like kind of duplicate, right? Yeah, duplicate. So why, why do we, why do we need to have <coughs> Because we need it, uh, because I showed you. Uh, can, can, we, can we use like, when, the, when a user upload an image for a file, you automatically go to? Yeah, you can do that. Those? Yeah, you can do like whenever you upload your image, you do your custom coding or uh, integrate S3, uh, S3 HDK of, for PHP and then upload it to the bucket. And where you are referring in the front end, you change the path, mm -hmm. you use some method and refer the path to the S3 bucket. You can do that also. But my point was, you have to do the efforts. Here, it's very easy to do, without doing changes in your coding. Yeah, yeah, my point would be like, uh, if, uh, if the users keep uploading 10 megabytes of images over and over and over, and your ECG also will have the same images, and your S3 bucket will have the same images. Yes. Right. No, no, actually, so it is not taking any space on the, on the client side. On the OS, it will not take any single space. If you see the media folder size, it will not show any size. Let me show you. If you see media folder, it's zero size. It will not take any single space here. It is just a reference here, okay. not a storage. I, I thought like you're not going to have a both side bandwidth. No, no, no. Um, it it's not. I'm a Amazon will bill you. Yeah. Uh, internally, even it's not downloading the files. It just keeps the reference. So if you access it, then it download. At cache it on the local OS. So if you want to access again, it is in the local OS, so it's fast. But when you access first time, it creates the cache. Okay. So if your site you you mount it and you uh, launch your site, so whenever user is accessing your product images, it's downloading to the OS, or uh, no matter which OS, because you have uh, multiple OS. You can have like using this. You see, you can have multiple uh, OS EC2 instances. So it will download the image, each user will access them. So this one like, you can use it for other, other applications? Definitely. For WordPress also you can use, Drupal also you can use. As long as you are having one single folder of user content. If you have multiple user content folder, you can utilize multiple buckets. You can have multiple buckets, mount them multiple times. You can use that kind of thing. Yeah. Another question. Yeah, sure. Um, what's the minimum EC2 instance type 
do you think if I just want to have my Magento in one EC2 instance, mm -hmm. what type instance would be the minimum that it could handle of that uh, Magento? Because it's quite you want to do in the production or just for your development? For production. Production? Yeah. Production, uh, at least you need a small instance. 1.2 gigabyte RAM, I think, for a small instance. We have the nano instance. I started this instance is nano instance. It's only having 600 megabyte RAM. The right. Yeah, it won't. Uh, for production, we, we should not use that. Because whenever you will access okay. 20 or 50 concurrent users, Magento yeah. takes a lot of RAM, you already know. So every request takes a lot of RAM. Probably like a T2 medium. T2 medium is very fine. It's fine. Yeah, very very okay. good. Very good. It's 4 gigabyte RAM, medium yeah. instance. So probably very good. a micro won't run, but maybe a T2. Micro, nano yeah. will not work. Well, yeah. From okay. a small, small, medium, or bigger you use. Okay, small is not. It's not. T2 it's small is for low traffic, it's enough. Okay. Even for our clients, we are using C3.2x large, 64 gigabyte RAM server. Oh, that's huge. He's huge, okay. but the traffic is huge. So uh, we, okay. we we are using uh, for one of our client is Charles and Keith, and for them we are using two instances of 64 gigabyte RAM, mm -hmm. so two production instances. And uh, then your database is on a, is on an RDS. It is in the RDS. It's okay. in different. That is also running 122 gigabyte RAM server. Okay. Because RDS here RDS is also have its own instance. Instance. Yeah. We don't know about the OS layer about that, but we, it's an instance where you can control the instance type, the RAM, you can control. So for RDS, the minimum instance will be fine? RDS minimum instance is or start from micro, yeah, it's also start from micro, small. It's okay. similar, similar instance yeah. of EC2. Okay. So if you are using medium for the uh, EC2, mm -hmm. you should use medium for mm -hmm. the RDS. Okay. Well, from my experience, if you want to run something, so you can do this kind of auto scaling that time because if you do you start with a small instance ah. even your traffic ro uh, grows uh, you can set up uh, auto scaling policy mm -hmm. in that you set up like when the load is more than 70 percent for more than 10 minutes you start another instance that's on the, the load balancer yeah or the load balancer level you can do also, you can shut down instance like when the load is less than 30% mm -hmm. for more than 10 minutes down the one instance. Okay. Because your load balancer is handling the load. Mm -hmm. So, which server is active, it will send the load. If server is down, it will not send the load. You can have your setting like how many minimum instance you have, at least one. You can have minimum two running all the time, some client requires. So, like that, you can have auto scaling. And you can save the cost also. You don't need to be provision all the time the high capacity which you are anticipating. Yes. You can have a moderate capacity all the time okay. and run as per traffic. Okay. So it's, it's the manpower of AWS. It's very flexible in this case. Any other question? Oh. So other than AWS, have you posted your applications in Cloud Digital Ocean? Digital Ocean? It's not cloud, yeah. I know, but just Yeah, yeah we, we, we have many other applications on the dedicated or shared hosting or and even on the Azure cloud. If you talk about cloud, we host an AWS, Azure, Google App Engine. And if client budget is not so high, we can use the shared hosting or dedicated hosting. Okay. Anything else? If you want to share something, it's it's your platform. You can share your knowledge, or you want to share some announcement. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks, AWS, for.